Over the years, many of the Star Wars characters have gone on to have their personal histories fleshed out, but with a universe filled with bounty hunters, slave traders, and intergalactic crime bosses, it's no surprising that sometimes this content has gotten pretty dark. So with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and this is Star Wars 10 Truly Disturbing Side Character Backstories. Number 10, Klee Glass. Klee Glass appeared briefly in Star Wars Attack of the Clones, informing Anakin of the fate of his mother and pushing him one step closer to the dark side. We meet Lars just one month after the kidnapping of his wife and Anakin's mother Shmi. At this stage of his life, he's a grizzled and tired man, and it's not really surprising. Born on the desert planet, Lars only ever knew the harsh and difficult life of a moisture farmer. When he was a child, his brother was killed in a speeder accident, and his first wife, the mother of Luke's uncle Owen, died after the birth of their son. Already, that's enough to make you a bitter old codger, but in his later years, he did find a new love for life after meeting Shmi. He bought, freed, and then married her, but tragedy for Lars struck again when Shmi was abducted. At this point, Lars gathered up 30 farmers and launched a rescue attempt, but only four of his party survived the encounter. The desperate fight to rescue his wife not only failed, but also resulted in the loss of his leg. Number 9. Salacious B. Crumb Jabba the Hutt's palace was filled with all manner of eccentric and questionable characters. But one of the most memorable creatures inhabiting the place was the monkey lizard jester and greatest named little freak you'll ever see, Salacious B. Crumb. Crumb didn't have a single line of dialogue that we could understand in the movies, but his maniacal laugh and place of honor made him a standout feature. <laughs> now, Crumb might have been a twisted little creature, but it could have all been an act just in order to survive. And that's because roughly 12 years before we see Crumb in Return of the Jedi, he was found hiding on one of Jabba's ships. Rather than kill the stowaway outright, however, Jabba made an agreement with the creature, whose race was known for their humorous abilities. The deal went something like this. If Crumb could make his new master laugh at least once a day, then he would enjoy every luxury available to him. If he failed just once, though, Jabba would straight up murder him. So if you were under that kind of pressure daily for 12 straight years, it's probably no wonder that you too would develop some kind of unhinged cackle. Number 8. Ula As we've just established, Jabba the Hutt was a pretty reprehensible character. When he wasn't orchestrating his criminal empire from the comfort of a chair's long, he was taking pleasure in the discomfort of others. Having an appetite for flesh, Jabba often bought enslaved Twi'leks, who were famed for their dancing skills to feast his eyes upon. One unlucky individual, though, was Ula. Originally born into a high-status Twi'lek family, she spent years training at a highly acclaimed dance school, going on to flaunt her skills on Tatooine. By some misfortune, however, she found herself enslaved and forced into servitude by Jabba. This is where it gets more than a little disturbing, though. In the Star Wars Expanded Universe, we get far more information about Ula's life in Jabba's palace. For instance, Jabba forced her to dance for him and quote-unquote give him pleasure. She's described as being quote defiled by the worm. She was beaten when she refused his quote carnal embrace and even considered committing suicide to avoid the ordeal of being Jabba's slave. So yeah, it's truly messed up stuff, and it's worth mentioning that since Disney took over the Star Wars franchise, all of these details do resign in the books, now ascribed as legend rather than canon, and that's probably for the best. Number 7. Dr. Cornelius Everson This character received less than a minute of screen time in the original Star Wars trilogy, but he's still remembered for his distinctly unfriendly manner. His encounter with Luke on Tatooine ended when Obi-Wan Kenobi stepped in, brandishing his lightsaber. If it wasn't for Kenobi's presence, though, things could have turned out a lot worse for the young Skywalker. The former practicing surgeon had a huge bounty on his head and was wanted by both the Empire and the Rebel Alliance. So yeah, his brag about receiving the death sentence in 12 systems wasn't just the tough talk of a drunk. Before going on the run, he'd been one of the most sought-after cosmetic surgeons in the galaxy, but soon began performing outlandish and depraved procedures on his patients, mutilating many of them in the process. Eventually, he began just kidnapping victims to practice his experimental techniques on, which included detaching limbs and reattaching them in the wrong place. His facial scars were the result of narrowly escaping capture by one of the many bounty hunters out to claim the huge reward on his head. Number 6. Bib Fortuna Just from looking at this guy, you know that he's a slimy character. 
This male Twi'lek was essentially Jabba's secretary, orchestrating the goings-on in his palace and serving the giant slug in whatever way he needed. He grew up in an affluent family and had a better start than most on his homeworld of Ryloth. As a rule, Ryloth had little prospects, and most Twi'leks moved off-world to better fortunes, and many even sold themselves into slavery out of desperation. Fortuna, being the crafty, awful bastard that he is, took advantage of this and spent his younger days as a slave trader, specifically dealing in his own people, exploiting the less fortunate with no regard for their well-being. So yeah, this guy is a total piece of garbage. Number 5. Chewbacca To Chewbacca's friends, he's something of a gentle giant. To his enemies, though, he's a force of fury nature. Like so many characters who ultimately ended up fighting the Empire, Chewie's disdain for them was not unwarranted, with two specific events likely contributing to his anger. Towards the end of the Clone Wars, his people were betrayed by their former clone trooper allies, and he witnessed many Wookiees killed or sold into slavery and was eventually captured himself. Forced to work and tormented by his captors, the Wookiee became increasingly more animalistic. The restrictive and oppressive life of slavery had a marked impact on a creature who once roamed the forest planet of Kashyyyk. Part of Chewbacca's legends history, though, involved he and Han being incarcerated on an Imperial prison barge. In this story, the barge breaks down but stumbles across a seemingly derelict Star Destroyer, which can be used for spare parts. However, a boarding party soon discovers that the destroyer was the site of a biological weapons experiment. Only a handful of inmates and prison guards survived after being exposed to a deadly virus and Chewbacca and Han were among them. What followed is essentially Dawn of the Dead in space, with the survivors battling hordes of undead stormtroopers reanimated by the virus. Number 4. Wilhuf Tarkin Besides from the Emperor and Darth Vader, Tarkin was one of the most senior and powerful members of the Imperial High Command. All of his decisions were informed by his ideology that fear was the only true motivator. If he could weaponize fear, then he would have dominion. In the early days, Tarkin's early military career brought him a degree of fame, serving in an anti-pirate task force. He dealt with his opponents in effective but brutal ways, and he rose to further prominence during the Clone Wars, serving in the Republic Navy. Although he gained a huge amount of experience during these years, his cold and calculated character was formed out of a much younger childhood experience. That's because Tarkin's homeworld was a harsh place, and his ancestors had struggled to colonize and subjugate the planet. When he was barely a teenager, family tradition also dictated that he must go into the wilderness and learn the struggle of survival. This experience, though, totally traumatized him. He was forced to fight off hostile creatures, being physically and mentally scarred by the ordeal. It was drilled into him here that fear could be the most crippling emotion, and that mastering fear and using it on others was key to maintaining power. Number 3. Honda Baba Honda Baba is best known for his dislike of Luke Skywalker and his unfortunate-looking friend, Dr. Cornelius Everson. Baba's drunk aggression towards Luke made his brief appearance in the movie memorable, not least because the altercation saw him lose an arm to Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber. Babin, like his horrid accomplice, was also wanted by several planetary governments, although he was somewhat less notorious than his partner. He actually saved Everson during an altercation with the bounty hunter, and despite the doctor being scarred during the incident, he did hire Baba as protection from then on. Together, they worked for the Hutts as smugglers and general enforcers, but Baba also helped kidnap people for Everson, assisting him when the Doctor performed his twisted and cruel experiments. This general hatred that many had for the pair forced them to adopt aliases at different points in their life as well, because nobody wanted to be mates with them. Number 2. Kia D. Mundi we like to think of the Jedi as all wise, perfect examples of moral fortitude, but in reality, they were just as flawed as any other group. By the time of the Clone Wars, the Jedi were in a fairly sorry state, and the Order was riddled with orthodoxy and arrogance. Years of relative peace had made them complacent, and even its most prominent members were misguided. When Kiadi Mundi was gunned down by his clone troopers during Order 66, then, he was felt a pang of sadness. When you look at his backstory, though, he was actually kind of an unlikable character. At every opportunity, he denied the possibility of the Sith returning, and even doubted Count Dooku's part in it. His arrogance, however, was only the tip of the iceberg. That's because Kiadi Mundi had certain privileges afforded to him that other Jedi weren't privy to. 
His species was unique in that males were drastically outnumbered by females, and therefore, the species had a low birth rate. Due to this, Mundi was permitted to forego the Jedi rule forbidding marriage, and he had four wives simultaneously and seven children, all of whom were killed during the Clone Wars. Now, you might be thinking, Josh, this just sounds like a tragic backstory, but the thing is, his devotion to the Jedi tradition was apparently so sincere that he refused to mourn his family and seemed kind of unfazed by their deaths. So yeah, sounds like a cool guy. Number one, Page Tico. The opening sequence of The Last Jedi depicted a tense and thrilling space battle showing the brave escapades of Page Tico, a young pilot who manages to destroy an Imperial Dreadnought, allowing the Resistance fleet to escape. Along with her sister Rose, Paige is motivated to join the Resistance after witnessing the horror inflicted upon her people by the First Order. Originating from the Automok system, Paige's mining home world was occupied by the First Order, and they worked her people to death in order to extract all the resources that they needed. Soon, the world became polluted, with many more of the inhabitants dying as a result. Sadly, sometime after joining the Resistance, the two sisters received the news that their home planet had been destroyed. After draining the planet of resources, the First Order had little use for its people and used them as target practice, shelling the world from orbit. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Did you know about the backstories of these characters and are there any interesting and disturbing ones I missed off here? While you're down there as well, can you please give us a like, share, subscribe and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.